to all of you from wherever you have come from. It was born in controversy. It has a library rather than the mechanics in the copy of Self-Help. It's Liverpool, 1803. You'd give them a run for their money. During Law Week, we have this strange thing in Australia where you pay $20 and you can go and get some of the best advice available. And as we walked into this Collins Street Melbourne office of this great law firm, this old wily solicitor, he said, I reckon if you restarted this, you'd give them a run for their money. Phonography really starts to take off, um, not in schools as he had hoped, uh, not in universities, but it, it's famous, it, it, it becomes much uh, uh, more famous initially and subsequently in the world of commerce and business. <laughs> Uh, good afternoon, I'm Roger Morris. Uh, I'm the president of the Sydney Mechanics School of Arts. I'm also the president of the State Association of Mechanics Institutes and Schools of Arts. An enormous success story was the Edinburgh Mechanics Subscription Library. Established as a library rather than the Mechanics Institute in March 1825 by three dissatisfied members of the Edinburgh School of Arts, which contained a library for mechanics. And it's um, really sad that Caroline had to stay in River Street. We're only talking a few hundred yards between the places, but she stayed in River Street for a few extra weeks to tie up loose ends, so she wasn't with William on the night of the 13th of March, 1781, when William came across an object that he knew immediately could not be a star. All I need to say now is welcome, a warm welcome, from me, the chairman of Bath and North East Somerset, to all of you from wherever you have come from, and I'd like to hand you over to Dr. Peter Ford. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have a most enjoyable con uh, conference and you and your stay here are able to sample the many delights that Bath has to offer. Thank you. the legendary founder of um, uh, Bath, the um, son of Ludwigabras, uh, so the story goes, the father of King Lear. And the story actually goes that he, um, he went to study in Athens um, in about the 8th, 9th century BC, where he contracted leprosy. It's a kind of moral there against foreign travel. It's the that have got a potential issue because they build it as more or less semi ruined trying to In Western Australia, the most abundant thing is agricultural hall. This is due to the building mostly being in rural areas and used for farmers for various agricultural related practices. These halls have been used for anything and everything in these communities, ranging from produce fairs and markets to the teaching of livestock handling and husbandry. 
Uh, some would say that Australia was the most democratic country in the world. It was one of the first countries to have universal male suffrage, and one of the first countries to have, except for some parts of the USA, to have universal female suffrage too. It, was, it probably had the highest standard of living for working people in the world. Also, it was a comparatively collectivist society, the home of mateship and not rugged individualism. So we have no doubt that the books were Clara's, which is interesting. In the next few years, Dunlop gave Clara a good deal of help and encouragement. He introduced her to Jane Carlyle, who was his cousin, and he got her paid work as a co-editor of the Temperance Journal. This is Liverpool, 1803. William Roscoe, who uh, was the principal founder of the garden, was a Unitarian, a, a Liverpool polymath. He recruited the curator for the garden from Manchester. Stephen van Rensselaer was born into a wealthy and prominent Dutch family. A Harvard graduate, influential in New York State politics, he lived a privileged life but wanted to do something for young people less fortunate than he, so he founded a technical institute. Yes. 